Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumet Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. In this video today, I want to talk to you about being an empath. Now, I felt like I was an empath for the longest time ever, specifically because I was very much so an introvert and I taught myself how to be more extroverted. But I started to notice that I was going against my authentic self. My authentic self likes to be introverted, it likes to explore the internal world. And so that's one of my top strengths is being able to talk, but also being able to listen, being able to observe, being able to notice my surroundings. So it made me very intuitive from a very young age. I would oftentimes read people's minds, okay? Now, not in a weird telepathy kind of way, but I knew what they were thinking, I knew what they were feeling. There are times the empaths fall into this trap where they see somebody else and they, they're complaining and you start to absorb their complaining and then moments later you start to notice, why do I feel so bad? I just feel bad about myself. I feel like criticizing myself. I feel like complaining. And you're not even going to know that you absorb that energy from the person you just talked to. All right? Now, this is highly common. Highly, highly common for empaths. Because empaths also have this tendency to be extremely people-pleasing. Empaths also have this tendency to be extremely people-pleasing. And so when they notice somebody else doing anything, let's say complaining, you want to be more like them to feel like you're building rapport with them. So you unconsciously, you take on their ideas. You might not even have had that thought to make fun of that celebrity before, but because they've done it, they've given you the permission for you to be more like them. And so they're putting out this offer. And nine times out of 10, empaths go with that offer that is being offered. It's very difficult for an empath to be like, no, this is my world, this is my boundaries, I understand, but please distance yourself from me. It's very difficult for an empath to do that, all right? Now, throughout the years, I noticed it becoming easier, or I would say much more easier, to express myself much more deeply from the depths of my soul, not just because the camera's on or whatever, but because I really feel it, I feel an urgency, I feel a sense of inventing a scenario in my mind that gets me much more energy, in a sense. Where you take on an imaginary scenario to give you a lot more motivation. When I was running once, I didn't feel like running at all. And I put on the mental frame that I'm running towards a goal. Now it's giving me much more purpose, now it's giving me much more leniency. You see, you've got to learn how to use your emotions, not be used by your emotions. Let me say that again. Use your emotions, don't be used by your emotions. Because emotions are a signal and a tool. It's a signal because it's just something for you to work on. It's just a sign. Like if you're sad, it means some, that thing is meaningful to you and that you care about it, so you're sad about it. If you're angry, it means that you got to set more boundaries if you're getting much more rage. right? They all have meanings. All of these emotions have meanings. So it's up to you to interpret the meanings, how you respond to that emotion, but then also be able to utilize it. Be able to use the emotion to help you do something. Don't push it away from you. So if you feel rage, use that rage and allow it to give you motivation, momentum, fuel for you to accomplish a specific task. Because emotions are just energy in motion. If you know what to do with that energy, it doesn't become difficult to deal with and process. A lot of times we get trapped in an emotional hamster wheel. We get trapped on one emotion and that starts to become our norm. And then we start to label it. And then we start to say, hey, maybe this is disorder or these symptoms are adding much more energy to the thought form. And it's difficult to break out of that because it actually feels safer to be in that state. As an empath, you want to constantly be using your emotions, figuring out a, out a way to distance yourself from other people's emotions, because their emotions are not yours. 
That's something you got to remind yourself is other people's emotions are not your emotions. So learn to cut the emotional cords and be able to create your own world, your reality, your rules. It's one of the things that I learned in Vegas when I went to RSD uh, World Summit. Your reality, your rules. That's one of the big pointers that I walked back with. And as an empath, that helped me. That really, that idea really helped me that this is my reality, so that means it's my rules. I'm allowed to do whatever I want. This is my playground. This is a place where I'm allowed to be free, allowed to experiment. I'm allowed to make mistakes. And I'm allowed to be fully myself, authentically, from a pure space. And if you don't have an opportunity or a space for you to fully evolve and be yourself and be vulnerable, it's quite difficult for you to go on the internal journey. Because you're going to want to do what you've done. Because it's a learned response. But when you can break out of that learned response and add your own response, then you start to have power as an empath. Because you can feel other people. You can feel their emotions. So you can guide them. You can help a lot of people. Because most of the times the problems that people are talking about are not their problems. It's something completely different. But you have the eyes to see that. You have the truth-seeking eyes. You get what I'm saying? So it's up to you to use that and not be overwhelmed by that. It's like you're given this huge gift, but you're treating it like it's a curse. And I know it's both, but why not leverage it being a blessing? Why not leverage it being a tool, a superpower, rather than it being a deficit or a kryptonite? Use your empathy as a communication tool, as a device for you to connect with others. And that connection is going to set you on a different tangent because connection gets people to relax. That's where oxytocin is create, created, through connections. We can relax more. Especially those we're truly connected with, we can relax and be our authentic true selves. Of course, there's this level of impression management. I'm aware of that. You see, I think the biggest thing that us empaths need is for us to speak our truth and finding space for us to do that instead of keeping it internally. Because we do like to break things down and feel others and sometimes we might smell the things that they smell or you know touch the things that they touch. You know, there's different kinds of empaths. And even sometimes download information, you know, clear cognizance. I've noticed that myself. I'm just, I make these videos out of nowhere. The knowledge just loop downloads into my head and I don't know how I do it sometimes but it's how I've maintained the flow state for a lot of my life that it's made it more possible so I like to believe that I've helped myself to create this paradigm where I'm actually allowing myself to speak my inner truth I hope this video helps you out today have an amazing day may the flow be with you and stay legendary see you next time